What up guys, I'm with Phil Daru here. He's a strength and conditioning coach from American Top Team and he coaches some of the top UFC fighters like Dustin Poirier, Joanna, Miro Dos Santos. And today, he's gonna put me through like a MMA style yep. strength and conditioning workout. Yeah, primarily this is gonna be basically what I call stage one in camp training. So it's a part of my condensed conjugate model. Okay. So you're gonna be doing dynamic effort upper and you're gonna do max effort lower. Okay. So we're gonna work on obviously two methods here, but again, we're working on overall strength and speed and power. The stage one mean this is for the pussies? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. <laughs> you're gonna do what I put my UFC fighters through. Okay. So cool. you'll have some fun. Okay, cool. You ready? I don't know if he's ready for an athlete of my caliber. <laughs> so that's what I'm worried about. He might. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm gonna be all right. I'm gonna get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna evaluate my walking and he just wanna see how I walk. 10 steps this way, 10 steps that way. Perfect. Alright, so give me some diaphragmatic breathing, right? You wanna breathe through the diaphragm. What you can do is take your fingers, place them right in between the ribs and the hips. And all I wanna see is that belly breath, right? So I want to expand the rib cage and then blow out. Good. The good thing is, is that he's a lifter, so he understands how to actually properly diaphragmatic breathe. Then we're going to obviously utilize that diaphragmatic breathing and work on his intra-abdominal pressure so that he can create that proximal stability with distal mobility. So basically what I see right there is that those ranges that you're kind of like, like rushing through, you don't have control of those ranges. So it's gonna limit your contractibility of those different ranges. And then when you're talking about in and out, like moving in and out laterally, getting yeah. in and out of the pocket, yeah. we wanna make sure that we have that optimal range of motion, yeah. active range of motion or mobility, yeah. so that you can produce more force, right? And redirect it getting in and out because yeah. our movements are gonna be here, back yeah. and forth. So when you're more tied, yeah. same concept, you need to have a strong base. Yeah, yeah, when you yeah. move, right, you're planning off that hip. So yeah, 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 again, yeah. adduction, abduction, that's gonna be a key role in how you actually move. Fix. Make sense? Yeah. Alright, so let's go back down. We're not done. coaches always talk to me about is like when I'm throwing a higher leg kick or yep. trying to get really get my hips into the knee I'm compensating by leaning back yep. Yep. but if I can build the mobility in the singular joints then I will prevent me from having to lean back to kick someone in the face yeah 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 definitely and you're getting out of a range and you're actually decreasing force production with that yeah you see what I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. so you want to use that muscle and, and honestly we'll probably get into the psoas a little bit yeah because I'm pretty sure that's gonna be tight on you I have a lot of Muay Thai guys and they're kyphotic in nature due to the fact that they're always rounded forward, right? So we want to make sure that we hit that now so you don't develop that problem. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But a lot of it comes from the psoas hip flexors. Yeah. And we need to make sure that you have, again, that range of motion necessary so that you don't lose glute contraction. Yeah. So we're going to brace here. Obliques, drive. Good, hold position. Give me more on the obliques. Now brace, push. That's better, that's it. Do it again. Into your back now. Good. Control it. Let's not be explosive here. Just come up. There it is. Down. Two more. Brace. Down. Good. Relax for a second. All right. So just relax. Let's see something. 
Alright, so what's ended up happening is <laughs> he's tickling me. He's gonna tickle. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna be ticklish. <laughs> it's funny, I did this to Andre Orlovsky and I swear to God, you, this guy doesn't seem like he laughs. Yeah. But he laughs like a baby <laughs> when I did this shit. Okay. So here we go. Okay. So I'm gonna go through. Yeah. Underneath the ribs, oh. try to open up. This is a form of what we call RPR, or flexive performance reset. Okay. Oh. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find his belly button, I'm gonna go two inches out and two inches down. Alright? Oh. 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 And what I'm feeling right now is a very tight psoas. Oh, 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 what does that mean? What does that mean, man? What the fuck? <laughs> Oh, that was not bad. This helps me with the pain. <laughs> if you ever see me in a fight and I cross my fingers, that means I'm in pain. <laughs> oh. oh, shit. God damn, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, All right, breathe, breathe. Oh. That's magic. There we go. Breathe. Now brace for me. Yeah, do it again. Do it now. Do it again. Breathe. Brace. Yeah, see, he's getting a little bit more expansion here. Right, it's, it's one thing to blow and get that, and get that, uh, get that breath going up, but yeah. I still want expansion. You see what I mean? So I want yeah. those obliques to fire a little bit more. There you go. Again, a lot of your your strikes, especially yeah. in Muay Thai, are gonna come from the obliques, obviously, and the hip flexors. So if we cannot optimally contract that, right, without putting any force towards it, it's gonna be hard to actually utilize it inside a fight. You see what I mean? Because you're not gonna be able to. You have to force things, and that's when you compensate. You oh, see what I mean? Now? Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. All right, come on up. toss and we're gonna shoot it through like we're shooting our back end right so I'm here I rotate with my hip I let my hip lead okay don't overextend though so I don't want you to close it down here I just want right here and then let the arm follow so I'm here ball is right here nice and close elbows are in tight I go ahead I'm gonna pivot my foot my hip is going to lead again boom again right here tighten up the oblique okay Are you running away, dude? No, it's getting water. No. He's trying to pull water. Got you. Let's go, let's go. Okay. I think he was running away, man. No, 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 no. <laughs> Can I get an update? How you feeling? I was supposed to do a podcast after this. Probably should have did a podcast before. So this is hard as fuck. We didn't even touch weights yet. God damn, man. This is how I know I could never be a professional fighter. It's too easy. That's why. Come on, man. Call this a workout? Barely breaking a sweat, man. Bro, that shit looks higher in his foot. People try to give me shadow boxing. I can barely shadow box without weights. Not bad. Okay, so this is a Zercher squat, but we're gonna use the box squat too as well because I also want to make sure that we're utilizing lateral hip uh, force displacement. So when he pushes, he's actually gonna spread the floor apart. I'm gonna go here tight. Drive up, squeeze the glutes, obviously, just like you're stepping back with a regular squat. Let's get nice and wide, right? So we're actually gonna externally rotate a little bit. And what I want is a big step, right? The hips back, spread the floor, then drop the machine. I'm a strong guy, but am I a gym rat? <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Okay. Nice and 
tight, and brace. Settle, drop your Good, keep that lock down. Brace is locked down, so it's tight. Right there, goes. Good. Settle. Come on, bike. if he can at least go to 315 with this one. I believe you can. Three plates. We'll do a single here. We'll work our way up. Let that fight fit right there. Come on, Come on right. Boots. The back. Cross. Good. Ah! <laughs> I need a towel. He's trying to be hard, but it's not really working out too well. Go grab a towel, man. So the bar is like way too soft. I'm like, dude, this shit's too soft. I need something harder. So I put this on. It's a what? It's a man pond. <laughs> man pond. Man pond. We can maximally load this yeah. with lighter weight than a back squat, yeah, than, yeah, than yeah. a deadlift, right? But still get maximal intent. We're still getting absolute strength out of it without that overload with all that weight. See yeah. what I'm saying? So the nervous system isn't going to get as taxed, but we're still getting the adaptation. This is literally the first time I've ever done zercher squats in my life. I knew what they were, but I've never done them. And you're gonna hit 315? I hope so. Come on now. Step, step. Walk it in. Oh, oh, oh. oh, what the hell happened? What the hell? More weight? That's what he said. That's what Coach wants. I don't think you're gonna have arms by the end of this. I know. I got a powerlifting meet on Sunday too. Are you going to be on Sunday? Oh shit, bro. See where the weak points are, it's upper back and, and hamstrings. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we gotta attack them. Hamstrings, glutes, hips, upper back. Other people wanted it. I never really used it before. <laughs> yeah. Well, I used it today, so thank you, Bar. I appreciate that. <laughs> so this is good for the entire posterior chain. Glutes, so remember, hamstrings. remember, we just compressed the spine. Yeah. Now we're decompressing the spine. Uh, so whenever I do compression exercises, I want to decompress the you know the, the spine in general. Honestly, what you're doing here is you're getting rehabilitation, right? You're increasing range of motion, right? You're driving synovial fluid, and then you're also getting some strength qualities in there for the spinal erectors, hamstrings, and glutes. Like I said, what you needed, you know, after that max effort lift. It's gonna be active recovery, right? So we're gonna fire up the hip flexors here. Okay. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right tight. Keeping the back down. Right? Keep the oh. So we're here, locking it down, right? And we're gonna switch. Knees up first, both knees up, both position there, yep. right there, 90, 90 degrees, arms are straight up, good, lock on the back, right, I'm going to give you a cue, lock it down, see that, right there, hold that position, now extend one leg, good, 
How's he doing? He's doing good, man. Honestly, this is this is more than what he's used to, and this is kind of an ordinary day for us. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the times with the with the fighters that we have, they have a large aerobic base. Like I said, their their GPP, their general physical preparedness, is at an elite level. So this is another step in a, in a direction that he wants to get into. So he got what he asked for. Come on. So that was probably one of the hardest workouts of my life, honestly. I've never done stuff like that, especially when you do something new, you know? Yeah. It's like your, your, your brain and your CNS is like, what the hell is this kind of mm -hmm. stuff? Mm -hmm. I learned a shit ton of stuff, so I can't wait to take this back. Thank you guys for watching. This is probably one of the most informative videos we've done in a long time. Let me know if you like this, put it in the comments below. Thank you for watching all of our content. Don't forget to support the brand, barbellbrigade.com. See you guys next time, peace.